Right, apparently I'm live again. Be on that one. Um, welcome to my studio. I'm the old duffer. I'm doing nothing special. I'm not vlogging anything. No software reviews. No hardware reviews. No ear training courses. No courses of any sort like that. Um, I'm just um, playing around in my studio, and uh, it is what it is. If you want to subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, tonight I'm going to be doing um, six tunes from um, originally recorded in 1992 uh, live these were recorded live at the weaver's arms in coventry's public house in coventry um with a audience of probably about 25 people there um it was the thing i think it was a sunday afternoon or something like that if i remember right there it's a long time ago in the mist it's 31 years ago so lost in the mists of time somewhere uh, exactly what i was doing <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've slept since then. So anyway, to the thing in question, I've got the um, I've pulled them all off tape originally. Well, originally they were recorded onto sixteen track tape, as uh, as explained in part one of this um, video uh, stream, whatever I want to want to call it, um, onto sixteen track tape, and then it was they were uh, put onto cassette. <laughs> And we used to flog the cassettes at gigs and stuff. Um, this is um, this cassettes were a little bit more available at the time. Then uh, the youngsters were going, well, "What the hell's a cassette? <laughs> it's a cassette tape, <laughs> eight of an inch tape, stereo." Um, I had a, <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, you had to have a pencil. <laughs> people who know what I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, the older older people. And and then after a number of years, I uh, actually put the cassette tape onto a mini disc for uh, storage purposes uh, a couple of uh, about a week ago i pulled it back off mini disc and re-digitized it into uh, cubase here so there's six songs i'm gonna be doing tonight and uh like I say, and uh, what i've got is a load of noise on the um on the recording because it is actually in uh, was on one stood on tape originally so if i just play the very first bit here you'll hear the amount of hiss on it so uh, that's what I'm so consider about all about hiss um so i'm trying to remove that so what i've done earlier i've done a Press this button on this little um, X noise, this Waves X noise stereo plugin, and it learns the uh, noise profile. I'm not going to do it again because it's, uh, it's already been done and it's all set up from the other week. And uh, what it will do then is take the noise out. So if I play that first little bit with it in and out, you'll hear the difference what it's actually doing. Now you could say that is character, but um, I suppose you know, yes, that's right. I suppose is it? it's character. People uh, spend money on plugins to put all that back in, but I actually want to take it out. So uh, with the plugin working, it's uh, considerably quieter. So it's not touching it a huge amount. It, there, it has got a few little artifacts in there, but I'm prepared to live with that for the uh, purposes of uh, archiving it and stuff like that. I'm then going into um, a weak child uh, compressor, and I'm just touching it on the compressor, barely, barely. So the needles are barely moving on that. That's the same setting as I had last time. And then that's going into a Waves um, mastering plugin. And I've just put Mix Bus Love on it and uh, basically put it on uh, a uh, default setting. I did turn that down, actually, on the spreader. I'll sort of put it back where it was. And then uh, that is then flying into Oxford Inflator to turn it up a little bit more up to or towards modern levels 
Uh, we've got the effect at 100 percent and the uh, harmonics curve um, this adds harmonics and stuff to it i'll just pull that down a fraction and then that's going into gulfos master with uh, about 30 40 40 percent on the recover and the um tame and then just to make sure nothing untowards happens, it's going into an L2 Ultra Maximizer. I'll just pull the threshold and the gain down 1 dB just to hopefully prevent it um, clipping on the output. Um, so I'm aiming for on the LUFs here and all this thing, uh, around about 14 to 12. Some of them might be slightly louder than others, but... Uh, that's what they expect on um, Spotify and all that sort of thing. Otherwise, they're only going to turn everything down for me. So uh, there we go. Uh, so right, without further ado, then that's the uh, that's basically what I'm done. I'm not going to be doing um, uh, separate uh, mixes for each one. I'm just going to bang everything through the same thing, same chain. So just keep it uh, a consist consistency in the sound. That's the word I'm looking for consistency in the sound so i've just pulled the um, markers up for uh, export and uh, without further ado i shall uh, export this is not my favorite i think the first half in part one has got the better tunes on it this one has got a couple of decent tunes in it um um as you'll hear as i go through it and i'll try and explain the stories behind them as well as i go and uh, so this one was just, uh, I think this is more of a stocking filler tune than anything else, but um, it is what it is, so um, there we go. I'm just going to um, go export, put you mix down, and then uh, this one is called um, Taking Chances. Chances. Right, let's export that one and see what the hell that sounds like.
Yeah, you know, so that was a um, tune called Taking Chances. This is all written on what, it is, what it's called, so uh, there we go. Um, the second half of the set was um, Pete decided to strap on the electric, um, so it's completely different sound into the uh, early, the, the first part of the set, the, in, which I did in part one, which was 12-string acoustic versus um, with an electric guitar second in it so uh on this uh i don't think the audio quality uh, is quite as good on this second part either for some reason but uh there we go that's just my ears i'm getting old all right this next one is a um a bluesy thing pete wrote about uh when his uh him and his uh wife split up <laughs> i think they did get back together at some point but uh as a, it's going to be a bluesy tune. Um, so two electrics on this one as again. Um, I think all the, the rest of it's all two electrics. So uh, there we go. Um, right, so special kind of woman. Let me export this one. So same settings as I got before. Um, exactly the same chain, X noise into pre-child, etc. And uh, I'll just leave it as is and it comes out as is. So, um, I have some stuff from um, about 1982, which uh, is my very first band, which I might uh, bring up on uh, upload and redo that. That was recorded. Recorded. Uh, we used to re record all the rehearsals in a classroom. Uh, in a, we used to rehearse in a school, so it's uh, that'd be interesting because. Uh, that's been put on reel to reel, and then it was recorded on cassette. Then went on to reel to reel. Then went back onto cassette and onto mini discs. So it speeded up and all over the over, over the place. But uh, so the special uh, kind of woman, or my woman from Tokyo, or whatever. Right, do, do, do. I'll export this one. And uh, so let's see what they, there are some artifacts coming out I can hear on um, on the sides a little bit, but, uh, but I, I can live with that because it's um, it is what it is. I'm not trying to um, break the atom here or anything like that. So uh, right, there we go. Oops.
Um, that was uh, that special kind of woman one. So this second half, like I say, is, um, this is the two electrics together. And um, the whole of this, I'm pretty sure of it. So, uh, and this next tune I'm about to do, uh, Crash by Design. I never came, I, well, I never agreed to the name Crash by Design. I always thought it sounded a bit naff, like crap by design. That's what I used to call us, crap by design. So, um, but uh, then again, I've always been, uh, I've always been a bit of a negative person. So, um, I was, I was, uh, see the, <laughs> the uh, negative and everything. If it can go, can go wrong, it will go wrong. And when it does, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I go, oh, I knew that was going to happen. So I'm, I'm sort of, I'm wired that way. The glass is always half empty with me or, Instead of half full, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so, so it's crap by design, but it's actually crushed by design. So uh, there we go. So same, um, um, exactly the same thing again. The old X noise on it, and then uh, Quick Child and stuff. And so I'm not changing any of the settings on this, just to give a consistency of all the uh, the rubbish I'm trying to clean up slightly. So. Uh, yeah, this is um, so it's this one's an instrumental for some reason. There's never any words on this, I don't know why not. Because uh, this is when we were attempting to be a rock band, I think. So, uh, I think the uh, original singer, which I do have a CD of when we was in the studio with him, came up with this name, this uh, name for the band, but he, he was a uh, couldn't quite keep up with uh, singing in a rock band. We were a bit too loud for him, so it was. Um, we decided to kick him out, and then Pete, the other guitarist, did all the vocals. <laughs> yeah, uh, you never give me a chance. Yeah. Right, okay. All right, let's uh, go for this thing. Crash by design. So um, there's a strange ending on it. Um, doesn't do what you expect it to. <laughs> for some reason, I don't know what I, don't know what I came up with that for, but uh, you'll hear it.
does. It's a, it's a bit of a strange end on it. A five at the end instead of a, a four. But, uh, I think we should have gone on and done eight myself. But um, there we go. Right. This next one, I never, I never really got to grips with this, to be honest. Um, uh, two electrics again. Uh, the problem in it's an obvious tune of the bloody lot. Bloody hell for what was this? Seven minutes ten. Christ, deep purple territory. Um, this is a song about prostitution, apparently. And uh, yeah, um, I can't see any more than that, really. So uh, I don't know where the uh, inspiration came from from that. It's social observation, isn't it? At the end of the day, so uh, let's uh, mix that one down. And this one's um, oh, in what is that? in can spell in simple two letter word I can't spell it uh, not my mind my mind's wandering again on uh, on uh, Tuesday I've got to go in and have my first cataract done which I'm not looking forward to so uh, hopefully uh, hopefully in about two months time I won't be won't have to wear glasses anymore except for close up stuff it all goes well other than that, I could end up fucking blind, who knows? But, uh, not blind in one eye. <laughs> I end up blind in one eye, I'm not having the other Fuka doing, that's for sure. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, two electrics. So the, the, the guy who originally mixed all this, he mixed it a little bit. The guitars are not wide enough for my taste, but um, he was learning um, how to do things, and uh, we didn't know any better at the time, so... Uh, there we go, right. Lonely in the night.
That's over. I never did like that tune. I didn't like playing it, and um, still don't like listening to it. Every time I hear it, it um, sort of brings back memories of uh, how tough I found that um, tune to um, do something on. Because you know, I'm not the best musician in the world, so. Um, but it was 31 years ago. 
sitten oikein, no ei. Sitten mä olin, <laughs> Warren, um, Warren the bass player, who is, um, is uh, Dr. Warren Lyington now, he's a very clever man. He always reminded me of a young Rutger Hauer, <laughs> that look about him, <laughs> sort of blonde, blonde fella. And uh, um, I think he's um, probably over 20 stone now, he's moved to America and does what all Americans do is um, eat too much. And uh, that's all my American uh, subscribers gone, <laughs> as it is. <laughs> I've never seen a thin American, that's what I'll say. <laughs> right, this is next one of, this next one is um, The Tree. This is um, another one, of, the last two actually fun songs. Um, this is what a riff I came up with. I had one of these um, strange little um, Zoom things, to, Zoom 2001 or something like that, and attached to your guitar, and it's like a multi-effects processor on your guitar, and you can press the buttons and stuff. I just thought it looked cool, but now I hear it um, 31 years on, it sounds shit. But, uh, yeah, that going for a, a JCM 800 combo. Um, I think GT75s are in that or something like that, speakers. And uh, I was looking on uh, looking online t today to see how much a JCM 800 just combo would be out of interest. I think I paid about 300 quid for mine brand new. Back in the 90s and uh, like a thousand quid now so I wish I'd kept hold of it <laughs> but, uh, there you go yeah GCM 800 combo with reverb yeah such things uh, yeah they're uh, expensive to buy them now it's like all vintage gears gone through the roof or some I don't see the um, attraction in it myself oh, um, a lot of these um, vintage guitars sort of built in the 60s and stuff, vintage fenders, and you go, what the, what the hell are people paying 20, 25, 50 grand for these guitars for? Because they weren't built very well in the first place. It's not like a modern guitar built by CNC, and when you know, it's, they're all peas in a pod, really. Um, well, it's got the vintage vibe, hasn't it, mate? Oh, well, I just don't understand it. I would never spend... Um, I'd never spend that amount of money on a vintage guitar. Really wouldn't. And even if, I, even if I had the money, I haven't got the money, but even if I had the money, I wouldn't. I think it's... Um, so, you know, these people... Some people buy, go, and go to the Fender or Custom Shop when they get one out the Custom Shop, made to look old. And you go, why? Why? Why would you do that? The Strat I play, um, which you see on some of my videos, I've had that... It's a 1988... And it's, apart if you look really, really close at it, you wouldn't know it, it was, um, you know, 30 odd years old. I haven't been gigged regular. It's got a few little dings on it here and there, but so you wouldn't know. Why, why people relic come for like that is a mystery to me. Try and make out you've been on the road a bit for years or something like that. I don't know. It's just, um, I don't know. A bit like private number plates, isn't it? It's a bit of a look at me, everybody. Right, anyway, enough um, going on about stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Right, it's called The Tree. This is, um, this one was a bit of a laugh, but uh, it's only a shortish one. Probably short enough to be a single, isn't it? No, just make sure I've got the right ending on, on that one. Yeah, I have. And then the final one is even shorter. So th this one used to go down well, occasionally, some places. That's what we did. This is a shortened version of it. We did do an extended version of it, but um, this is the short version. So, the three.
purple sky all around A vision clear without a sound from the uh, crap by design band ah <laughs> uh, yes uh, I, think of that. I can always, uh, almost picture the place um, oldie woldy um, very large pub in Coventry up the uh, toward the rough end of town so uh, uh, this next one uh, or the last one this is the last one of this um, collection of um, Attempted remasters. Um, I haven't done a particularly good job, but um, it is better than what it was. And now I've got it in uh, wave form. I can um, upload it to my Spotify and all that rubbish account. This one, the House of Correction. I remember we played this at um, I can't remember which rugby club it was at. It was either Bedworth Rugby Club or Coventry Rugby Club. But they absolutely loved it. I mean, we must have played it about uh, probably 
six or seven times, one after another, they kept playing it, play it again, because they were all trying to learn the words to it. And you'll, when it, it starts, you'll um, realise why they were trying to learn the words being a rugby club. Um, you know, any rugby songs, um, they're not politically correct. So this is, um, this is more tongue-in-cheek. Um, when uh, Pete wrote it, we did wonder what the hell he um, gets up to in his uh, bedroom to come up with stuff like this. <laughs> As you will find out sh very, very shortly. Right, let me go. Uh, I'm just going to um, pull the board a tad, because there's a load of noise on the start. Isn't it? So, right, let's go for it on this one. And, uh, out of correction. House of Correction. House of Correction, yeah. Right, that's my attempt at um, cleaning up and uh, remastering some old stuff. I probably haven't made a good job of it. There'll be people with better, far better ears than me. It's all muddy at uh, 350 hertz, mate, and you need to pull a bit of 6K out and turn up the 8K a few dB and put a notch filter in at such and such. 
Yeah, whatever. Do you think I'm really bothered? Do I look bothered? Do I look like I care? <laughs> nope. I don't care. Right. That'll do for tonight then. So, um, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, and all that sort of thing. I do have loads and loads of live videos of me um, getting it completely wrong. It's about 100 and. 70 odd of them and on uh, the live tab of my um what's it going back a little while so i'm not frightened to make a fool of myself i don't um sit there and do um 30 takes to try and make myself look good or anything and or edit it edit shite out of stuff and uh, it is what it is and music's meant to be fun and uh, i have fun doing it hopefully most nights i have fun doing it and uh I'm not interested in uh, money or anything like that. I'd like to get a few more subscribers, so uh, when I do have a, a little bit of a live thing, get a bit more interaction with people. But uh, I do look to see if there's any comments appearing on the live chat, but um, it's only occasionally I get a few. One particular gentleman from up uh, Hull comments occasionally. He knows who he is. Um, yeah, so uh, that'll do. Um, I may say I've got some stuff from 1984, which is, which really needs some. Uh, it needs all slowing down and stuff. So I'm um, and uh, mix, and actually turn into single tracks because it's one continuous um, thing I copied off a uh, cassette from the very first band I was in now uh, when I was a a young man before I had grey hair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so anyway. Right, I'll do it tonight. Thanks for watching and all that bullshit. So, if you like what you see, subscribe and hit the notification bell. From, I do mostly do live stuff and then um, I upload it onto my page and uh, whatever. I suppose I've done this last night, but um, I had my eyes dilated or um, when they measured all my eyes for cataract surgery and. One well, of my eyes was hurting where they had to uh, numb it to get the lens thickness and stuff and it sort of uh, semi-scratched my eyeball. So uh, I had a bit of a sore eye for a while, so I didn't do this last night. Apart from that, they were so dilated, everything was too fucking bright. So Anyway, catch you again. Bye now. Let's have some howls of derision for a change. Bye now.